Eight News starts now with your Storm Tracker 8 forecast first. Breaking on 8 News, a devastating dairy farm fire. The barn stall in flames with animals still inside. How Dinwiddie fire crews helped stop the flames from spreading. A multi-car crash on Poe White Parkway. We'll have the latest as several emergency crews respond to the accident. VCU basketball prepares for a midweek test. I'll tell you about one key stat that might grow to circle. That's coming up on 8 Sports at 11. 8 News starts now with breaking news. That breaking news tonight out of Dinwiddie County where nine calves were killed in a barn fire. Good evening. I'm Deanna Albritton. I'm Eric Phillips. It happened at Richland's Dairy Farm. 8 News reporter Ben Dennis is live at the Dinwiddie Fire Department where crews just returned from the scene. Ben. Eric Deanna, that's right. A tanker had just come through the parking lot, not a long time ago in Dinwiddie, this is a popular longtime dairy farm. The family that runs it is distraught, and rightfully so. Nine of their calves were killed when a barn went up in flames just this evening. Take a look at your screen here. What's left of the barn are support beams and hot steel now on the ground, all illuminated in red here by a fire truck that had responded tonight. The family who runs the farm tells me the 20 stall barn housing these young cows was only built several years ago. Thankfully, no people were injured after the call came in just before 8.30 tonight, according to Blackstone fire officials. The site was smoldering not long ago as cows were mooing nearby. Animals spared after the blaze was contained to just one barn. A sad addition to the atmosphere there. The cause of the fire is undetermined at this hour. Blackstone, Didwinnie, and Fort Pickett have responded. I'm told a pond around half a mile away helped control this fire, but it was too little, too late for the young animals inside. The family, they said, they told me that they will rebuild. It is likely going to exceed the cost it took to get this barn running in the first place, which was around $30,000. But for now, we are live in Dinwiddie County tonight. Ben Dennis, 8 News. All right, Ben, thanks. More breaking news tonight. A multi-car crash on Powhai Parkway in Chesterfield. It happened around 8.45 tonight. Our photographer on scene tells us at least five cars were involved. Staffers in our newsroom could hear the crash and see sparks from our offices. We're waiting on information about how it happened and if there are any injuries. We'll have the latest on air and online as soon as we learn more at WRIC.com. New tonight, the city of Richmond has reached an eye-opening homicide rate of 81 so far this year. Now, you may remember we told you just weeks ago Richmond had reached its highest number in 15 years. That was 10 homicides ago. And it's not a problem that's unique to the city. New at 11, we're taking a broader look at the entire region. 8 News reporter Olivia Jaquith has been looking into this for weeks. She joins us live now to break down the numbers. Olivia, good evening. Well, Eric, as you said, there a closer look at this problem reveals that the homicide rate has gone up in just about every area locally, except for three localities. That'd be Chesterfield County, the city of Hopewell, and Louisa County. So I've been asking local leaders here in Central Virginia what they're doing to reverse this. From Henrico to the Tri Cities to Richmond. Homicides are up in much of central Virginia. I've had to touch it. I've had to deal with the families, and I know the hole that it leaves in a community, in a neighborhood, in a school class. As of Sunday, the number of killings in the city of Colonial Heights, Hanover County, Henrico County, Prince George County, and the city of Richmond have all increased from 2020 to 2021. And that's with more than two weeks still remaining in the calendar year. I've seen a lot of violence and a lot of families that have been heartbroken because they lost a loved one to senseless violence. You know, things that didn't have to happen. Henrico Police Chief Eric English spoke with 8 News at a vigil for homicide victims earlier this month, saying there are patterns in the deaths his department has investigated this year. Domestic violence uh, is creating a lot of our issues. Uh, 11 of our homicides we've had this year have had some type of domestic nexus to them. A lot of our young people, are, people out here are not afraid to carry guns and not afraid to use them. In the city of Richmond, Councilman Mike Jones says local leaders need to create opportunities for youth. 
Even something as simple as this skate park at the new Southside Community Center. It's giving young people something to do because if not, you remove all hope. You don't know what you're going to get. How can we get a large number of jobs in this area that people can live and have dignity and hold their head up high and say, man, I'm taking care of my responsibilities. Now, Louisa County, thankfully, has had no homicides in 2020 or 2021 thus far. Detective Love with the Sheriff's Office tells me the key has been making, that the, making sure that those responsible for those past crimes are held responsible, as well as making sure that outreach efforts are made to connect with the community. Live in Richmond tonight, Olivia Jaquith, 8 News. Olivia, thanks. New tonight, we're learning that a gun was found at Hopewell High School today. According to the school superintendent, a student left a jacket with a gun inside of it outside a door to the high school building. The student was attempting to retrieve the weapon when a school officer was able to get to it first. The student is now facing disciplinary action from the school and charges are pending tonight. New tonight, we now know the ransomware attack on the Virginia General Assembly is preventing lawmakers from drafting and modifying bills. Now, this is just weeks ahead of the legislative session. The legislature's IT system was hit by hackers on Sunday. State officials tell us legislators are using paper to do their jobs. Capitol Police are relying only on cell phones. Those are just some of the adaptations state workers are making in the wake of the attack. Their actions, a cybersecurity expert we spoke with says the state may have tried to prevent itself from ever having to take. Government, federal, state agencies, um, national laboratories, uh, and similar uh, have certain plans, exercises in place that they regularly execute. But it all boils down to humans who may mistakenly um, do something. The cyber attack has also shut down the websites and some services for other legislative agencies, including the Division of Capitol Police. Now at 11, a federal inspector wrote fake safety reports for inspections he never completed at the North Anna nuclear plant. Gregory Kroon pleaded guilty to charges this week. The charges were filed after his retirement from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission last year. He's accused of lying about performing inspections of key fire and flood safety systems at the plant. Kroon will avoid jail time, but could face a potential fine of up to $9,500. In Chesterfield, two people are dead and one is hurt in a murder-suicide in the Pinwood neighborhood. Police tell us they responded to Barkbridge Road at 2 a.m. and stayed there for more than 10 hours. They say Christopher Evans shot and killed his longtime partner, Makiba Hall, shot her adult son, and then killed himself. Officers found Hall's son, who lived with them, lying in the front yard. Concerned mom of four, Jasmine Thompson, lives just doors down from where this happened. It's terrifying. It's, I don't even know at this point. I mean, you don't think it's going to happen anywhere near you, and then it does, and then what do you do? I mean, you've got to keep your kids safe. Hall's son was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. Police aren't looking for any suspects right now, but still want you to call them if you have any information. A Richmond shed goes up in flames, killing the man living inside. Firefighters blame a kerosene heater he was using to stay warm. Family members say Byron Lewis died in that early morning fire on Maryland Avenue. Investigators say the fire was an accident, but there are some things to remember to heat your home safely. Practice a fire escape plan just in case. Have clear paths to all exits and work to have working smoke alarms and test them regularly. Grace Tolliver, a neighbor who lives down the street, says she first saw responders nearby. It's shocking because you this is a very quiet neighborhood and nothing like that really happens around here. I'm sorry to hear that he died in there. Richmond Fire says this marks the ninth deadly fire this year, claiming a total of 12 lives. Richmond police say 48-year-old Orlando Shaw was the person shot and killed Monday night. This is an update to a story we first told you about here at 11 last night. 
Officers were called to Commerce Market in Delhi on Commerce Road just after 7.30 p.m. The victim was pronounced dead at the scene. If you know anyone who may have been at the store around that time and may know something about what happened, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. 8 News is taking action tonight, speaking to one of the most notorious criminals in Virginia as he's still behind bars. Norman Jimerson is saying he is sorry. Last month, Williamsburg resident Debbie Smith told us she met with Jimerson for the first time since he raped her more than 30 years ago. She says it set her free. Now we're asking Jimerson about that five hour meeting. Talking to us from Nottaway Correctional Center, he says he's glad to have the chance to apologize. I regret everything. I just couldn't believe that I did such a thing and the pain that it caused. Jimerson says he was on drugs at the time. He's now clean and is up for parole soon. 8 News is also taking action for a Richmond family struggling to recover after sewage floods the inside of their apartment. Take a look here. You can see a thick layer of wastewater and feces covering Georgette Dubon's family apartment. Dubon says it happened suddenly after their toilet and bathtub began filling and overflowing after a suspected sewage backup in the building's pipes. She says she called maintenance, but they didn't send someone to help them until hours later. Now the water is under control, but their home is left a smelly mess. My mom, she had to grab um, the mop and the bucket to take the water out outside because it, it was so much. She's not one to complain, but at this point, this is her breaking point. She needs help. The management company, Gates Hudson, in part blames the situation on a third party plumber and an upstairs tenant who they say used their water after they'd been told not to. They add that they will work with the family on the financial impacts. Governor Ralph Northam wants to give money back to taxpayers and cut down on your grocery bill. Northam wants to end the state's 1.5% sales tax on groceries. In addition to that, Northam is proposing a one time tax rebate of $250 for individuals and $500 for married couples, plus an ongoing income tax cut for certain working families and an end to accelerated sales tax payments for retailers. As Americans are dealing with inflation again, these extra dollars can make a big, big difference. I want everyone to understand that we're able to do this in Virginia because our economy is booming. In a statement, a spokesperson for Governor-elect Glenn Youngkin said Northam's proposal is a step in the right direction, but not enough. Well, we've all been inspired and influenced by remarkable women. So now is your chance to nominate a woman who's made a difference in your life or maybe in the lives of others around you. Head to WRIC.com and go and share her story and enter her in our Remarkable Women contest. If you do, she could be featured in our eight news stories. You have through December 31st to submit those entries. A controversial person in American society can breathe a little easier. What officials have ordered for O.J. Simpson? Ahead on 8 News, heavy rain slams the West, turning an entire neighborhood into a river of mud. See how firefighters had to save residents from this slippery slope. J.D. Ah, uh, no rain for a while in central Virginia, but a continuation of unusually mild December temperatures. We will talk all about it when we come back. You're watching 8 News at 11. We are covering the news where you live. Stay right there on this Tuesday night. JB, Eric, and I will be right back.
O.J. Simpson is a free man for the first time since 2008 after he was granted an early discharge from the Nevada Board of Parole. Simpson, who was convicted of armed robbery, was released from prison in 2017 and has lived in a gated community in Las Vegas ever since. Heavy rain in California triggered several mudslides across Orange County, California this afternoon. Take a look at this video out of Silverado Canyon. You can see the mud rushing down the hill at a high rate of speed. Look at your screen right there. Firefighters have had to rescue several trapped residents, but there are no injuries at this time. And of course, JB, we are not expecting to see anything like that in our area, even though we may, in fact, have some rain coming up? Is that what we're looking at? Rain will be coming up probably over the weekend for us here sometime on Saturday. But before we get there, we're going to enjoy several days of very mild weather here across central Virginia. So right now, real-time Viper radar is quiet. There's not much going on. A couple of showers starting to break out here. Interesting things setting up for tomorrow. Strong winds out of the south. Possibly some severe storms in the Midwest. There are high wind warnings in effect in portions of Iowa. And listen to this, kids. If you're up late, you should be in bed. School's on tomorrow. They're actually closing some schools early in Iowa tomorrow because of the fact they're expecting some winds gusting 70 to 75 miles an hour, which is enough maybe to blow some, uh, uh, some high-profile vehicles like school buses over out there. So that tells you've got a pretty good storm starting to develop out here. It's spinning high clouds over towards us right now. We've got high clouds moving in. As we go a little later on tonight, we'll get some clouds that advance their way in from the east over us here. So temperatures right now have dropped down into the mid to upper 30s. Petersburg at 29 degrees being one of the cool spots along with West Point and Tappahannock. These temperatures will probably drop maybe two degrees more and then stabilize out and actually rise a little bit towards tomorrow morning. So wake up and head off to school tomorrow, off to work, 40 degrees, partly sunny skies. By noon, we're up to 56. And then as we go into the afternoon hours, partly sunny to mostly cloudy conditions and temperatures near 60 degrees. So here's that cloudiness over us tomorrow. You see breaks developing as we go through tomorrow night and into your day headed your way on Thursday. That system in the Midwest starts to approach, but you notice how we really don't have a whole lot of moisture with it here. And when this first part arrives on Friday, clouds around, a sprinkle or two, but most of the action is going to be well off to the west of us. Rainfall. Moving into western Pennsylvania, taking a run at New Jersey by the time we get to Saturday, along with Baltimore and Annapolis. And we'll get our showers and thunderstorms coming in on Saturday afternoon also. But before we get there, a return of mild temperatures. We could be near 70 both Friday and Saturday. We would have to make 75 on Saturday to get a record high. Late day showers for us here. Cooler on Sunday. Watching a small chance for a system on Monday, but it's looking more and more doubtful with each and each computer run. But it'll be cool next week with temperatures, as you can see, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, only in the upper 40s to around 50 degrees. Well, thanks, John, very much. Before winter weather hits, make sure you're signed up to report a closing at WRIC.com. We list schools, churches, daycares, hospitals, large businesses, you name it. And if you're not signed up, you need to do it now. Once the storm hits, it's going to be too late. Just head to WRIC.com and click on Report a Closing under the Weather tab. <laughs> Time now for a check on sports. Not too chilly over there. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> Natalie Calabat standing by with the latest. Hey, Nat. Always hot over here, Deanna and Erica. Big midweek matchup is on deck for VCU basketball. Mike Rhodes' keys to the games are coming up after the break. I'll be right back.
Eight Sports is sponsored by James River Air. Good evening and welcome back to Eight Sports at 11. I'm Natalie Calbat. VCU is hot entering the middle of December. The Rams have won their last three games and will host Florida Atlantic at the Seagull Center tomorrow. VCU only turned the ball over 11 times in their most recent win at Old Dominion. That's a stat that Mike Rhodes watches closely every time out. It's our number one goal of the season. Uh, you know, be below 17 percent turnover rate. And now, when you have a, a steady ball handler back with you, the leader, your on-court leader, that's huge, without a doubt, and we all see that. But I also think other guys on the team are taking care of the ball and, and responsibility. And I just think guys are just becoming more comfortable in their roles. Tony Elliott will get to watch and learn over the next few weeks. The new Virginia coach will be an observer as Bronco Mendenhall prepares for his final game before stepping aside. Elliott already has a feel for the Cavaliers from the outside, having coached them against them at Clemson, and he's eager to take a closer look. It's very unique, uh, and it gives me time to make sure that I get a, a really good lay of the land and an understanding of, of, of where the program is under Coach Mendenhall uh, in the direction that we need to go. So I'm going to be very patient uh, and make sure, first and foremost, that I get the right people. Uh, that's that's going to be the approach. It's, it's not about uh, the X's and the O's to start. It's about the people. The Washington football team has succeeded recently in spite of injuries. Sunday was another example as Kyle Allen came in for Taylor Heineke and led a comeback. Washington also lost Terry McLaurin to a concussion and had more bumps and bruises on the offensive line. Head coach Ron Rivera says although the injury list is getting longer, his team can keep pushing towards the postseason. Washington enters Sunday's game against Philadelphia in the seventh and final playoff spot. Well, I wouldn't say it's insurmountable, but it most certainly will test your depth more so than anything else, and that's that's where you get concerned, um, you know, because our uh, you know we've lost our top two centers right now, so that is a little concerning as far as the offensive line is concerned. But you know, the guys that have stepped up and played have done a pretty good job. That'll do for eight sports. I'm Natalie Calvat, eight news. We'll be right back. Thank you for your business. Three, two, one. <laughs> Is that all you got, Kimball?
We're doing a slow clap for our own Natalie Calabat tonight. It's her last night here on 8 News. I'd like to thank you guys. I'd like to thank all the viewers at home for welcoming me into your homes. It's been an honor to share all of the local sports stories in this area. It truly has. I know JB's been with you all these four years. Yes, it's been a fun ride. Thank you so much. And it's never a goodbye, right? We can always catch up and see each other on social media. So Quickly, thank you what's so next? Much. So I'll be doing some live sports broadcasting on digital ESPN and other networks as well. So. Well, they'll be able to hear your smile, I'm sure, coming through the airwaves. We will miss it certainly here yes, very much. Well, we will see you tomorrow night.